gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. They're bracing themselves. <laughs> like undertakers. <laughs> Asked if we were attorneys out front. <laughs> oh, that, that would be bad. You wish today, right? Yeah. Trying to distract you with the bright ties. I was looking at the bright colored ties. Yeah. I think they're trying to distract you with the ties. Is that what it is? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I got the message. I just didn't have time. Election went on yesterday and tomorrow as well. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sure. Good morning. Good morning. Brett, Brett, who's going to kick it off? I'll start, I guess. Uh, All right. We're sitting backwards for you guys, I guess. Yes. Yeah, so, um, would you like to uh, just introduce your team? Sure, and sure your can. Yeah. My name is Brett Holland. I'm with uh, Stiefel, and my business partner, Mike Battistelli, is with Stiefel as well. And we're fortunate today to have uh, Mark Gensenheimer. He's the president of CS McKee. Uh, CS McKee uh, manages about a third of the overall pension, uh, right around 33%. And he's going to make some comments here in a few minutes, a little bit about the markets, economy, and so on. So um, with that, we'll just get started, if that's all right. That'd be great. Um, so page 4 of 11 in the bottom right-hand corner. If you want to go to that page, it's a page we typically kind of get started with there of the report. And um, uh, if you can see up in the top left hand side, this is for the second quarter, obviously, um, it would be April 1st through um, uh, June 30th is what it would be. And uh, we'll look at the quarter to date numbers. Current period is the same because this is a quarterly report. But the second column from the left there uh, says quarter to date, uh, beginning value. So again, April 1st was 142,726,356. And then uh, between uh, like additions and withdrawals on that was a million three hundred ninety nine thousand four hundred fifty three, and then the return or the negative loss that we had during that period of time was ten million seven hundred twenty thousand four hundred seventy, and then at the end of the quarter uh, was the one hundred thirty three million four hundred five three hundred thirty nine dollars. Um, Next column to the right of that there, again, this is just kind of a, a year to date number. So starting in January, we started with the, the 153 million and then between deposits and withdrawals for retirees and so on, there was $1.2 million of withdrawals as you can see underneath that. Um, uh, loss, uh, negative returns during that time was 18 million. And then again today, like I mentioned, we're at the end of the quarter, I should say we're at 133 million is where that is. Um, bottom right hand side, just our allocation, we always like to just briefly touch on that a little bit. Uh, cash equivalents, there's 2%. Uh, there's a fair amount of cash that's being held in some different areas, but they're representing 2% there on that particular area. Alternative investments is that REIT portfolio, uh, portion of your portfolio, the Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, fixed income is your bonds, which a uh, large portion of that is with CS McKee. And then our equities are around 63% is where that is. So any questions on those particular things at all on that page? I have no particular questions. I'm just like, how can I, 18 million is a lot. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I know. We'll comment on some of that in a little bit. Okay. Um, and then I'll have you go to uh, page six as well. If we could just go to that page. So page six, um, kind of, uh, on the right uh, half of the top page, you see one year, three year, five year, 10 year. So if you go to the bottom of those columns, our, our one year return, so this is over the last 12 months, is a negative 6.53%. You follow where I'm at? Yep. Uh, next column over is just a three year return of 5.57, 10 year return of 6.52, and then the 10 year period uh, of positive return of 7.23%. Um, the only other thing we'll just mention, and Mike might talk a little bit more about this uh, uh, here in a minute, is just we've continued to keep a balanced approach with this. And what I mean by a balanced approach, a balanced portfolio, where uh, our equities are a little over half is in stocks, and the rest is in usually bonds or cash, uh, things that tend to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, some of the REIT portfolio, too, is considered an alternative investment. Um, there, there are reasons that we have the different managers that we have, and that's for diversification purposes. 
Um, there are times whenever you're very pleased with maybe one particular sector, and then there are times a year later you're not pleased with that particular sector. And just to point out, not to pick on any particular managers, but Lake Mason is one of the managers that we have for one of the pieces of your pie uh, of the overall mix, and their large cap growth uh, uh, portfolio. And over the last several years, they've been by far the superstar in the whole portfolio. Um, and this year, they're struggling right now. So, but again, that's why we have different things in different places. Um, so, um, just trying to keep the diversification. The, the first quarter was a challenge. Um, it was the first time since 1977 that both stocks and bonds were down. So, even though we were diversified, it was a struggle. It was difficult. So, and with that, and then Mike has um, any questions with any of that, I should say, as well. I'll just give you some updated numbers uh, through yesterday. So, through yesterday, the uh, the balance was 134 million 388 and 273. That does put us down. We actually picked up a little bit uh, since the end of the quarter. So we are down 11.67 percent through yesterday. Um, did want to point out we did uh, did receive the annual uh, contribution. Um, check uh, that was uh, two million four hundred three thousand and ninety nine dollars so that that came in so the net withdrawal including that contribution um, as Brett pointed out was about 1.2 million dollars uh, year to date so contributions been made as you guys have been doing annually uh, for quite a while now so um, we do have about three months worth of cash kind of set aside for our monthly uh, deposits for the retirees so we think that's a good position to be in uh, we're not in a we're not going to have to go and sell uh, or liquidate some investments from money managers while the market's been down hopefully in three months maybe things are a little bit better um, and we'll have to look at that at that point but for now just so you're aware of it we have about three months worth of cash distributions on hand and then, uh, you know, again, as far as the allocation, as Brett mentioned, uh, everything's in line with your investment policy statement. Um, so we're not looking to make any changes. We're just going to continue to have that balanced approach, as we always have with, with the pension plan, plan here at Lebanon County. I think that ser has served us well. Uh, we haven't made any big bets one way or the other. We've just kind of stayed very consistent to our investment policy policy statement. And I think, you know, that. Looking at the 10-year, the longer-term picture, uh, having that return north of 7%, you know, I think that proves that mm -hmm. point out pretty well. Yeah. Um, so I'll answer any questions, if anybody has any questions. Mr. Controller, anything? <coughs> okay. So I think we'll have well, Mark. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll just give you just a, a few words on McKee, um, and then I'll talk a little about the markets over the last year and then I was going to bring the reports that I emailed um, about a month ago but they're totally irrelevant <laughs> with what's happened with the market and and I'm, I'm hoping that I'll, I'll uh, be able to just give you some sense of um, we were talking about this earlier that as <clears throat> volatile as things are it's not nearly as crazy as what we've lived through in like 2000 and 2008 and um, even to and even, even the beginning of the, the pandemic was was really frightening. But anyways, uh, so uh, CS McKee, we're you know Pittsburgh based, always have been. Um, we've got about eight and a half billion dollars under management. Uh, of that, uh, probably sixty percent are public pension plans, mostly counties, states, uh, municipalities, and the rest is split pretty evenly between everything else, endowments, foundations, corporations, um, taft Hartley plans, but it's all institutional. Um, and uh, we work with, right now we work with about 37 different Pennsylvania counties. Um, it's kind of where we got our start back in the early 70s, uh, working with municipalities, mostly in Western PA, and then it started to spread in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, so you know things are things are well. We're spending a lot of time on the road with our clients, just kind of holding their hands, saying, "Okay, you know, remain diversified." You know, things things are crazy um, uh, right now, not just here but uh, around the world. But um, 
th these, these guys are really good at what they do and, and they, they keep you diversified, which is the most important thing in a lot of different asset classes. Um, so I was just kind of take you back. So March 23rd, just a couple weeks ago, um, was the second anniversary of the bottom of probably the fastest and most, one of the most terrifying drops in the market. That was when the pandemic started. Um, and you, we forget these things, but the market dropped 34%. Really? I, 30, I did not remember it was in, that much. In a month. Um, and we forget that because it <coughs> recovered re re really quickly. Um, so shortly after that drop, um, that we went into a recession. Um, and it didn't last really long. But we had you don't know how long those recessions are going to last or, or not last. Uh, so fortunately, stocks soared back um, at the end of that quarter and uh, are up about before this last several weeks, um, up over 200%. Um, again, you, you, you tend to remember the downside and not, and not the upside. So when you look under the hood, um, there are a number of reasons why the market did recover. Um, num number one, the, the Fed um, put in all these uh, accommodative measures that they, they just they dropped interest rates down to about zero. Um, and that just tends to fuel the economy. Um, the, the other thing they did, they started to give money out. Um, I'm sure you've received, you know, some of those ARPA assets, uh, which is great. Um, and we all started to spend, which is really good. So consumers drive, you know, 70% of the economy. So as we all started to spend, things started to, to, to pick up. So fast forward to 2022, um, and it, it was, I mean, we had a great run for you know, two and a half years. Um, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, this January hit, and we, we, we hit an all-time high in the markets in early January. And the reports that I sent um, about a month ago uh, said that we were down four and a half percent. Well, now the S&P is down 17 and a half, 17 and three quarters percent as of uh, yesterday. So um, it, that's pretty far off the, the record uh, where, we, where we were. Um, but as of two weeks ago, um, my comments would have been, um, you know, despite the Ukrainian-Russian uh, conflict, um, six consecutive months of inflation, you know, continuing to go up, um, the Fed raising interest rates as much as they have, and they're going to continue to. A couple weeks ago when I was meeting with uh, Westmoreland County, I said, um, despite all that, the economy is really strong. Um, and then yesterday, you know, we saw that retail sales, you know, coming out from Walmart and, and Target um, in particular, they reported really weak sales. Um, and we think that was the primary driver of why the market dropped yesterday. Because um, prior to that, a lot of the earnings reports were pretty strong that had been coming out. Um, and the unemployment is really low, uh, you know, so that, that, that's a positive. Annual wage gains have been, you know, continue to be really strong. Uh, job openings remain at, uh, you know, record levels. Um, until literally the last couple of weeks, 80% of companies that were, were reporting earnings were, were really strong. Now, now it's probably about 50%. Um, and you know, one thing to keep an eye on. I travel a lot. I don't know if all of you. The airports are packed. You can't get rental cars. You can't. Um, so, so there are some good underlying things going on in in the economy, um, which are keeping us, you know, relatively positive. Certainly not frightened like we were in the middle of the financial crisis. Um, so. On the other hand, you know the Federal Reserve is aggressively reversing, you know, their uh, policies. Um, they're they're going to keep raising interest rates, and uh, frankly, our folks believe that if if we can get through that and get through it relatively quickly, that's a good thing. Interest rates have been too low. It, you can't keep things going with interest rate, and those of us that are getting closer to retirement, <laughs> we we don't want to have to rely on. Uh, the equity markets for that. So, so for savers, you know, to be earning two or three percent versus zero percent, 
um, we, we think is, is a positive and you need to get to the point where interest rates are um, uh, you know at, at, a, at a reasonable rate um, so they've already wound down their bond purchasing program um, the Fed is just saying hey we have to tame inflation so they're gonna let interest rates um, go where they feel like they need to go um, inflation is going to remain high here for a, a little while. We don't think it's going to be like it was in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, you know, when I got into this business in 1981, um, interest rates, I was selling money market funds at 15.5%. I thought I was a good salesman. <laughs> um, my first mortgage was 12.75, and my and Annie and I thought we got a really good deal at that point. I Maybe remember we, those days. Remember that? <laughs> I do. That, that was pretty frightening yeah. back then. Remember the energy lines you, at gas stations? and um, So th th those types of things were, where we were really, really concerned about the markets. Um, but with what we've gone through um, on the other side of the financial crisis, um, our, the, the, the backbone mm -hmm. of the economy is strong. The backbone of our financial um, uh, uh, holding the, the banks the it, it's really strong um, so and, you know, and the market has been you know since the recovery of, of the pandemic it's just been up so you're going to have a some kind of a recovery um, and it, it's you know it, it, it's going to be volatile for a while and uh, and that's why you remain diversified in, in your portfolio um, so you know while reported earnings have been strong um, forward earnings haven't been as strong um, and and we think that's why well amongst all the other reasons that's why the markets have been so volatile you know the market was up what 800 600 points 702 days ago down a thousand points or 1200 points yesterday um, we're also keeping an eye on all the COVID restrictions in China you know, that that's another thing that, that's been um, you start messing with those supply chains <laughs> coming out of China and it just tends to, again, bring more volatility to the markets. So it's going to be a bumpy ride. Um, but specifically in uh, the large cap value portfolio that, that we manage for the county, um, again, the, the report that I sent out are, are irrelevant. So um, as of Monday, the large cap value portfolio was down 8.6% uh, versus the S&P of 17, down 1775. So, so we're, we're beating the S&P by about um, 8%. Um, and as Brenton was saying, you know, growth had driven the market for the last several years. That's why you want to have a growth manager. And we're much more of a value manager. And that's why in these kind of markets, um, that, that's where you want to have a value manager like CSP. Um, so uh, where, where leg uh, has probably outperformed for the last five or six years, we had underperformed the market for a little bit for the, that time, um, and you know so that, that's why you, you you really want to have that balance. So as far as the overall portfolio, all the volatility uh, in the markets really caused a flight to safety in the first quarter. Um, anytime you have all this volatility, uh, you'll have a lot of dollars that tend to go to like consumer staples and, and utilities. Um, so our investment pro process just leads us to companies that have uh, lower debt. Um, and we, we just want to make sure, and that didn't matter for the previous 10 years, um, but now, now it really does. Uh, the energy sector produced really strong returns. So our holdings in uh, Marathon Oil, Chevron, and EOG were really strong. Uh, with commodity prices surging like they did, uh, your holding, or our holding, your holding of uh, Freeport MacMoran was up uh, 20% in that first quarter. Uh, John Deere was a really strong performer. It was up uh, 20%, uh, really due to an increase in food and commodity prices. Um, financials and, and healthcare were the weakest sectors. Um, so we, we've, fortunately, we've been um, underweighting uh, financials and, and healthcare and overweighting uh, the other ones. So we're, we're gonna continue to overweight materials, uh, industrials, uh, consumer discretionary, um, while this uh, pullback in earnings from uh, Walmart and uh, uh, and Target and others, um, we, we still think there, there's there, there's a fair amount of uh, potential uh, spending coming from the consumers. We, we don't think it's going to last that long. We could be wrong, but 
you know, cyclical, cyclical names have been um, hurt to a, a slowing economy, um, and it's why we've been we've been under uh, weighting those. Um, on the fixed income side, um, you know, the fixed income portfolio was down about uh, four and a half percent as interest rates rose more rapidly than we've seen than we've ever seen. I mean, frankly, as long as we've we've been alive, and. Uh, Frankly, I, I think the Fed's doing the right things. Um, we, we, we need to we need to slow inflation. Um, they, I, I would prefer personally that, that they would make these moves as quickly as possible, and we just kind of get through the, the pain of increasing interest rates rather than do it real slowly over a three or four year period. Get it over with. Yeah. Yep, just rip the Band-Aid off. Um, Don't you have a, a red phone? Make a direct call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can tell you they wouldn't pick up a call coming from me. Um, uh, so, so, uh, on, and so our, our fixed income team has been together for 24 years and they tend to do really, really well in these times of volatility. So it, it's, so the whole portfolio is, is made up of treasuries, um, government agencies and really high grade investment corporates. Um, and we, we even underweight corporates in, in this type of, of, of interest rate scenario. Um, so you should see uh, continued outperformance uh, from the, because they, they just manage the portfolio so conservatively. And, and we don't think you should be taking risk in your fixed income portfolio. Where, you can, where you're supposed to take risk is in your, on the equity side. Um, so we're going to continue to be overweight government agencies. Uh, we expect to continue to perform really well. We're going to underweight corporates, underweight mortgage-backed securities. Um, and you know, with these excessive fiscal and monetary policies, um, they will influence the fixed income markets here for, for a while. Um, we were in a bull fixed income market for 40 plus years, and um, we're, we're, we're not going to be in that kind of a market for a time period, but we don't think it's going to be that long. In fact, uh, we, I, I recently read a report last week that um, some large state plans are starting, believe it or not, we wouldn't do it this soon, but they're starting to overweight um, fixed income, believe it or not, thinking that long term over the next 10 years that uh, total returns from bond funds that have like an intermediate duration will be in the range of 8 to 10 percent over that time period. I don't think we're quite there. I think we know that the Fed's going to increase interest rates now for the next three quarters or so. So why don't you just sit tight and, and let that happen? Um, so it, it's going to be a bumpy ride for a while. Rising interest rates and ongoing inflation, um, this unfortunate war in the Ukraine. Um, you know, some argue that a world in crisis, while horrible, um, can be good for the economy. You know, if if you look back um, all the way to the Industrial Revolution, technology has driven the economy here and and across the world, um, and. Global G I, I read a really interesting article a couple weeks ago. Global GDP was at 3.4 trillion in 1900. Um, in 2020, global GDP was over 112 trillion dollars. I mean, that's that's incredible how much growth there's been. And it's all been driven by technology, and 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 technology is going to continue to drive because pe for, fortunately we, we we live in such a great country where there's, there's more innovation here in this country than there is anywhere else in the world. But there's also a tremendous amount of innovation across the world. So if, if you look most recently at, at the COVID epidemic, we, we, they developed these vaccines faster than they, by multiples. Um, when, whenever you have wars that are going on, um, through technology, they, they tend to develop things more quickly. Um, when, when there's shortage of food, they develop things more quickly, and it's all done by technology, and uh, and we are the leaders in in the in the global economy of, of developing technology. That, that's why we continue to be so bullish on uh, on the U.S. And when we go through these times of uncertainty, that's all they are: are times of uncertainty. And we will come out of, of the other end. And uh, I can't promise anything, but I, I would be. Uh, I would bet that a couple of years from now, you're going to say, how much were we down, you know, a couple of years ago? And, uh, and, and, and I, I would expect a well-diversified portfolio to, in the not too distant future to get back to that point where you're going to be able to um, uh, beat your actuarial assumptions. 
Um, and then just, just you know, to, just to, to close, the, the, the bottom line is uh, we at CS McKee are going to continue to own those companies that have really strong balance sheets and where we can expect uh, future earnings to increase. Um, you, you recognize every holding we have in the portfolio. They're all well-known names, um, and, and we'll continue to own those companies and just tend to, we, we, we don't buy and sell a lot, but we, we, we when, we, when we buy a company, we, we, we like to hold them for you know, typically six to 10 years. And we only tend to buy those um, companies that, that, that get undervalued and, and tend to be leaders in their respective sectors. So um, so the, these markets are scary, but we we're, we're still tend to be pretty optimistic. optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and we're, for, we're for the long haul, so that's another yeah. one. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to go on. Um, I just want to say you've been steady at the helm, and um, we've trusted this team for a long time. So I just have to bite the bullet, <laughs> hang in there, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 uh, we, we've worked with these guys for decades, and uh, used to work with Mike's dad. Mm -hmm. you know, well, we all did. Yeah, well, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. wonderful guy. And, and uh, I, I think it was carrying on that same legacy. And, and again, it's about the McKee, they used a lot of really good managers, and uh, I think your your portfolio is positioned really well. I know these times are a little scary, but it's okay. I, just, I missed this twice. I think you mentioned the 17.75 percent drop. Was that first quarter? The, no, that's S&P. That that's from January 1st. Or, but actually, that's from the high of like January 3rd or 4th or 5th, and, and that's just the S&P <coughs> yep, yep. uh, through yesterday. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Gee, you could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just, just a couple quick comments. Uh, CS McKee does have two portfolios, as Mark mentioned, the fixed income and the equity, and it does make up about 33% of the overall portfolio. I don't know if Brett had mentioned that earlier, so I just wanted to make sure that was on the record. And again, just like CS McKee, the other managers, we've built the, the pension plan to be defensive. Uh, for a lot of the comments that Mark made, does apply to a lot of the other managers. So. We've always, uh, from day one, we've started managing it for you. It's always been protective and, and defensive. So, thank you. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. James. So, it's interesting you talked about 2000 to 2008 because yeah. between 2002 and 2007, the SPY was around 300. The government's no longer artificially inflating the market. <clears throat> That's changed, as you mentioned. Isn't it reasonable with the SPY recently at 480 that it would go back to 300 since? that time period of 2002 to 2007 is very similar to what we're experiencing now and should we not see a up to a 30 percent correction yet in the market i mean you sound very and i know it's your job to come in and be very positive but Actually, the market no, no, is really is like really i think in for a long-term like correction at least 30 percent of 30 percent we're almost down 20. um so we so another 10 percent is reasonable yeah yeah i, I think it could be I, and i i think it's going to be a bumpy ride and when you go into a a bear market um, there, there tend to be all these volatile days where, where, you, where you all of a sudden you're up, you know, a thousand points, but then you're down a thousand points and you're up a thousand points. Um, I don't, we don't think we're going to drop another thirty percent from here. Um, our guess would be, you know, maybe another five to ten percent. Um, but we, we just think that the company is, is in, or the country is in such a much stronger financial position than it was back then. And we were talking about this earlier. It was really scary. Uh, in 2008-9, I mean, it was a financial crisis. Well, that was also related to the housing class. It was, it was. Um, and uh, we, we, we just don't think that we're in that type of a, you know, economic scenario at, at this point. And Although, we're are we not because the housing market's actually way overinflated as well? Aren't we on a yeah, but, but, housing, but, other housing bubble? But, but you didn't have, uh, the, 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 there, there were a lot of things that led to that housing debacle. Um, and, 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 and a lot of the rules and regulations um, have changed uh, for the better, a lot more conservative than they were back then. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think we're in a housing uh, bubble at all like we were back in, in 2008. We have to, uh, if you don't mind, we have a, another oh, 1030. Sure. No, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I couldn't uh, continue. How that it's, it's interesting, but we have a the judge is waiting outside. So uh, thank you again thank for you. being here, Mark. Thank you. We did not.
congratulate Commissioner because I apologize. I was supposed to do that at the beginning. I wanted to say something and I apologize for missing that. So congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Morning. going to tee this thing up uh, may do so and then we'll uh, introduce colleagues and then go good morning. Forward. 